Okay, when we're dealing with analogous and homologous structures, we're dealing with the difference between structures that have common ancestry and structures that don't. Let's take a look at these mammals here in front of us, specifically, specifically two, a, a male lion and a female lion. The male lion here, you can tell by the mane, and the female lion is a little smaller and has no mane. And a human. If we compare structures, if we compare their skeletal structures, you'll see there's ribs in both the male, the female, and the male human, or female human. You'll see the shoulder blades are very similar. You'll see the skulls, both have skulls. Both, although the lion has a tail, the male, the human has a tail bone. You'll see it has a vertebra made of bone. Here's a vertebra made of bone. The neck bones and the neck bones. Of course, there's differences. No one's saying that the lion is a human. That's, that's just ridiculous. But the, the structures are homologous. In other words, since they're both mammals, they're both in, they're both in the same, the lion and the human are both in the same group, they have structures that are very similar, and they have, they have functions to those structures that are very similar. Sometimes this function is different, but the structures are generally similar, and that's why we call them homologous. Let's take a look at the, at the bat wing versus the, the, uh, the, uh, the cat the human and the whale. You'll notice that the color coding codes for the bones that are very similar in each of these. All four of these creatures are mammals and have common ancestry. And as such, you'll notice that the structures are very similar. The difference is, of course, their length and their thickness. The bat, since it uses its arms or its appendage just to uh, flap its wings in order to fly through the air, its appendages are very thin and lightweight. The human uses it to grab things, so it's in the middle between the, the whale, which uses its appendage to push through the water, and so these needs to be a little stronger because it's bigger as well. And then the cat, which uses its front limb as a, as, a, as, a, as a foot, basically. You'll see that the bones of each of these have just different uh, shapes, but they're similar in number, in position, and as such, we call these homologous structures, specifically because these creatures are closely related evolutionarily. In other words, they're all mammals. These kind of homologous structures, again, we're talking about homologous structures, they, are, they continue. They continue throughout the different organisms as we move through our studies of different uh, creatures and different species. Here you have the dog compared to the human. In this posi position, similarly, you'll notice in the middle here, the human is positioned the same way that the dog is, and of course on the two ends, the dog is positioned the way the human is. You can see uh, the, the strong resemblance in the skeletal structure of the dog and the human. Now, there, no one's saying that a dog and a human are the same. What we're saying here is that the structures necessary for the function of the skeletal system are similar. So because you have the similar function, you have a similar structure. But on top of that, because there's common ancestry, the positioning of the bones, the material that the bone's made of, etc., is the same, or similar enough to call it the same. Okay, when we look at the difference between the butterfly wing here and the human bat and bird wing here, we'll notice that these vertebrates, and these all three of these are are vertebrates. In other words, they have backbones. They have backbones made of bone, in fact, that these three organisms share similar structure. You'll notice that if you look carefully enough, you'll see that this bone here relates to this, this very similar to that bone, which is very similar to this bone. And you'll notice that the phalanges or the, the finger bones here, they extend here and they extend there. And they, even though they take different shapes, of course, and no one's going to argue that, I think you'll see that when you look at this pair of bones here, for instance, and this pair of bones here, and this pair of bones here, that there's similarities between these three because they're related. In fact, the human and the bat are both mammals, and the bird 
is a vertebrate, but it of course is not a, a mammal. Now, if we take a look at the bird wing or the butterfly wing, the butterfly wing has no bones, so there's no bones. So it's made of of, of a dried exoskeleton. It has color. All right, that's not really the uh, the big difference here. There's no bones, and there's, so there's no similarity in structure other than this wing is used to fly. So even though the butterfly flies through the air, just like the bat and the bird, the human who cannot fly is much more closely related to the bat and the bird than, it is, than, the, than the bat and the bird are to the butterfly. So this shows you when you see similar structures, when you're looking at the similarity between the structures, what you should be thinking about is that these structures tell you something about the relation, the relatedness of the of the various species. The closer the 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 number of characters are, and we call these characters, the qualities of the organism. Things like bone. Are they made of bone? Do they have a backbone? How many bones do they have in their hand? Where are the, where are those bones? What are the shapes of those bones? The same thing with uh, the butterfly, where you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, it's, made of, it's not made of bone at all. It's made of skeleton. There's no real skin to it. It's, a, it's, it's made of, a, of an exoskeleton that's dried up. So th these gossamer wings, although their wings, are much different from the wings of the bat of the bird, and therefore we say these three organisms here are, these three organisms here, are related to one another, where the, this one here is different. And we call, of course, these are insects. Butterflies are insects, where the human, the bat, and the, and the, and the bird are much more similar. So here, the similarity between the group, the, the, between group one the three that we just discussed, and group two, the insects, the similarity is not, they're not related to each other evolutionarily. They're not, well, they are if you fall, if you go far enough back, but they're, they're far enough away from each other that we can say they're not as closely related as they are to one another. They're not both, they're, all, they're not all the vertebrates. They don't have the same ancestry for this particular structure. So because this is these, these structures here between the bat and the bird developed in a similar way and the insect didn't, even though it's the same function, they're both used to fly, these are analogous structures. In other words, they're similar in what they do, but they're not similar in their heritage, their inheritance, their heritage, their they've developed in a different way. The butterfly developed the same function in a different way. Where the, the bird and the bat developed their flying ability in a very similar way. And so we say this similarity is a difference in closeness of relationship evolutionarily. So, okay, I hope this made the difference for you. You understand the difference between analogous structures and homologous structures moving forward. I hope this helps you in understanding uh, the, when we compare, for instance, a squid to a turtle or a pig or a, uh, or a shark, that all the vertebrates have similar, much more similar structures than the squid do. The squid are completely different species in a completely different group. You fall, you look back far enough, further, uh, far enough, we all share characters. The squid does share characters with the, the human, the pig, the, the uh, shark, and the turtle. For instance, all those organisms breathe oxygen. All those organisms use ATP for energy. That kind of stuff, it's very basic among most living creatures on the planet. But they're, they're so different. We, our relationship is so far removed from the squid that you don't see a heart, a very distinguishable heart. You don't see lungs or gills. You don't see a circulatory system clearly. You have to look carefully because it looks different because the structures and their functions are different 
not just because of the environment in which, in which, in which the, the squid lives, but also because of the heritage that the, that the squid has versus the rest of the vertebrate organisms that you're studying in class. All right, I hope this helped. Thanks for listening.